In this video, let's go through all the HivePress settings in the HivePress settings section to make sure that the website is set up and functions according to the requirements. Let's start with the listing step. Within this step there are four sections – Display, Search, Submission and Expiration. Let's go through each of them. Here you can choose a page that displays all the listings. We have already done it in previous steps. Listings page display. If this option is checked, then the listings page will list categories instead of listings until some specific category is selected. With these three options you can set up the number of regular, featured and related listings displayed per page. Also, note that if something is not clear, you can hover on the question icon for an extra description. Additionally, you can check our docs or ask a question on the HivePress community forum. For example, thanks to the clue, we know that this option allows you to generate listing titles based on custom fields automatically. It's a useful feature if you are running a car directory, for example. If you have custom fields like a car make, model and the year of manufacture, then the title will be generated based on these fields, like Chevrolet Camaro 2020. Here you can allow users to zoom the listing gallery images. In the search section you can select which default fields you want to show in the listing search form. As you can see at the moment we can choose only keywords and categories, but if you add new searchable attributes they will also appear in this drop down list. In the submission section you can adjust the listing submission settings. For example, you can link custom terms of use page to require users to accept them before adding a new listing. If you are building a product catalog or another type of website that doesn't require users to add their own listings, check this option to hide the front-end listing form. Note that the listing moderation is enabled by default, so the site admins will have to approve every listing manually before it appears on the front-end. Uncheck this option if you want to publish listings automatically without approving them first. This one allows users to report listings for any reason that violates one of the website terms. Finally, the expiration section. Here you can set the number of days after which a listing expires and the number of days after which an expired listing is deleted permanently. If you made any changes, don't forget to click on the Save Changes button. Let's move to the next step. Reviews. Within this step you can set up the reviews functionality. Using this option you can allow users to leave multiple reviews per listing and with this one you can disable moderation if you want to allow publishing reviews without checking them first. By checking this option you can allow vendors to reply to reviews left by users. The next is vendor step. This is how users who add listings are called in HivePress, meaning that anyone who added at least one listing becomes a vendor. In the display section you can define whether you want to display vendors on the front end at all. If so, then similarly to listings you can select a page that displays all vendors and set the number of vendors per page. Display name. This defines how the vendor name will be displayed. By default it's always a user name. However, if you create some vendor attributes, you'll also be able to set them here to synchronize the username with, for example, a company name, etc. In the search section, you can select which default fields you want to show in the vendor search form. Finally, in the registration section, you can allow direct registration. By default, to become a vendor, a user has to add at least one listing. But if you enable this option, then users will be able to register as vendors without submitting listings at all. That's all for vendors. Now let's move to the users tab. In the display name field, you can set how user names are displayed on the front end. You can leave it as it is, simply the first name, or if your users agree to share their full names, you can select the full name option instead. A more private option is displaying the first name and the first letter of the last name. In the registration section, you can enable or disable user registration. It depends on your website niche, but in most cases it's better to allow website visitors to register, because a user account is required for sending messages, adding listing to favorites and so on. 
If you select the registration terms page here, users will have to tick a checkbox with the link to this page in the registration form before registering an account. You can enable this option if you want to generate a username from the email address automatically, instead of showing a separate username field in the registration form. I recommend enabling email verification to ensure that every email on your list is authentic. Also, it's really important to restrict access to the WordPress backend for regular users to prevent any potential security issues. Let's move on! In the sending section, you can enable attachments to allow users to send attachments via messages and here you can select the file types that can be attached. Then you can set a list of blocked keywords. This means that all the messages containing these keywords will be blocked. In the storage section, you can enable or disable storing messages in the database. When disabled, this option basically sends all the messages via email instead of storing and displaying them on the website. If this option is enabled, you can set the number of days to store messages on the site before they are deleted automatically. Now, let's move to the Geolocation tab. Here are various settings that allow you to set up the geolocation functionality on your website. For example, here you can select the content types that should have the location features. By default, there are two types available, vendors and listings. In this field, you can choose the provider of maps and location data for your website. Currently, HivePress is integrated with Google Maps and Mapbox platforms. In the previous steps, we have already chosen Mapbox as a map provider, but you can decide to use Google Maps instead. Here, you can leave the countries field empty if your website allows listings from all over the world, or select specific countries to restrict the location selection. Here, you can set a radius to define the location search area. It will allow users to see all the listings within a specified distance from a selected location. Alternatively, you can check this option to allow users to adjust the radius on their own, in the search form. Also, check this option if your country uses miles instead of kilometers for measuring distances. If you want to create a page for each region, you can check this option too. By default, the location search is based on the radius, but if you want to enable search by regions, such as countries, states and counties, you should check this option. When enabled, this will automatically generate pages similar to categories in the listings regions section, and each region will display listings from the current region. Finally, you can check this option if you want to hide the exact location on a map and show a cycle area instead of the map marker. Ok, now let's check the integration tab that contains all the third-party integration settings like reCAPTCHA, Google Maps and Mapbox. Also, if you purchased any of the premium HivePress themes or extensions, here you can set your license key in the HivePress store section to enable automatic updates. As you can see, we already have the Mapbox API key set, but let's also enable reCAPTCHA to protect the front-end forms from spam bots. To do this, it's necessary to sign up for an API key pair for this site. Let's go to the Google reCAPTCHA service page. I'll leave the link to this page in the video description. Now I'll briefly fill in all the necessary fields. After you fill in the site details, simply copy both keys, go to your website and paste them into the corresponding fields. Then. Select the forms you want to protect with a CAPTCHA. In this case, I'll choose the user registration form to prevent the spam bots from registering. That's it! We have just finished setting up HivePress. Now, let's move to the next video, where I'll show you how you can monetize your directory website in several different ways.